Welcome back to TTC. A lot of impact driver vids this month. Shaping up to be like the month of impact drivers and bits, but y'all might just have to get over that because this is probably the most fascinating tool we've ever dug into. And on today's episode, very much digging into this one. I felt after seeing the odd, sometimes good, sometimes great, sometimes not performance of DeWalt's all new DCF 860 impact driver, that it was so different from forward to reverse, we wouldn't be able to discover why that is because it would have to be some type of board programming. Well, I was wrong. Today we put the latest guy from Team Yellow under the knife, and with the aid of our 10,000 frames per second high-speed camera, use slow motion shots to uncover why it's doing this. And also measure some performance figures we believed would be technically impossible with current cordless tech and the latest impact mechanisms we've seen. This tool, whether by accident or by design, seems to downright break physics at times, and that comes with a price. Let's dive in, which is easy enough done with a few screws. All these are quite loose and no Loctite. First thing we wanted to do was take this tool apart and see if anything jumped out at us when it comes to the nuts and bolts, and a fair amount of grease pushing out of this tool already. Like most modern impact drivers, it seems like 75% of the head is impact mechanism within a tiny, thin, brushless motor, but this one might be pushing a 80-20 relationship. Thought it might have been too much heat pushing out that grease, but it seems to me to just be simply a result of gobs of grease used in this mechanism. The most I've ever seen in a driver, absolutely packed full, so it makes sense some of that got out. The hammer on this guy is what I'd call about average, maybe under average in size, sort of squared off in shape too, which is rare these days. But what stands out to us is the hammer reset spring. Have not seen one quite like this. It's thick for an impact driver and much more travel afforded to it than most as well. And painted for some reason, also never seen that. It's like they're using some aftermarket high performance spring in here or something and affording most of the space in this large hammer housing to the spring rather than the hammer, which seems unusual. And yeah, why we cracked this thing open is because of unusual things. The absolute first thing we did this week after prying another broken socket adapter out of its collet is to shoot some high speed with that call assembly removed to try and learn anything about why forward and reverse might be so different. The first thing we learned is, hey, this is really cool to look at. Getting to see the female collet interact with the male hex bit inside of it and the resulting cascade of force that ends up turning the socket and causing this tape to wag around. Number two, this DeWalt in its forward setting here is hitting 4,500 impacts per minute. We got measurements of like 4,325, 4,222, and 4,600 off of footage like this. The wall advertises 4,500, it seems to check out. That's the highest we've ever seen, just 0.013 seconds per hammer hit. This tool can hit, recoil, turn, and hit again like 80 times in the space of you saying 1, 1,000. Number three of what we learned is this is violent. There's a lot of half hits or jitters and forward slamming on that bit that is not usually in the recipe of an impact driver. Now check out reverse. Sort of looks the same, right? Same steps, except maybe a bit more orderly or at least predictable. And like it's sort of sped up here, but this is the same high speed frame rate. And that back and forth action, well, it's now like pulling back rather than slamming forward. The real shock comes in the numbers though. This is hammering every 0.0118 seconds. That's 5,065 impacts per minute. And this, this footage we measured is it hitting every 0.01 seconds flat, 5,500 to 5,700 IPM throughout this shot. Based on the RPM of this tool, which we measure at 3,840 in either direction, based on the motor size, based on there being just two dogs on the anvil and hammer, based on everything we know about these tools and seemingly the laws of physics, that should be impossible. Brands have been upping the ante with these new screw hammering tools by going from like 4,000 to 4,100 to 4,400, now 4,500 IPM with early leaks showing of this tool being 4,600 IPM. 5,500 plus seems like a bit of a stretch, but we measured this footage again and again and kept getting the same figures. So yeah, opening this up was on our high list of priorities after editing that terabyte worth of data from the high speed, and we find mainly a lot of grease in an interesting looking spring. Well, that must be some spring, but for us to take a live look and for you to come along for the ride, this is going to require some surgery, the non-reversible kind. The process of opening the hood while the car is driving is always different depending on the tool. In this one's case, in order for the planetary ring gear to be affixed and stop from spinning, would have loved to run it this way, but the hammer case is needed with its teeth to locate that ring gear. So the aluminum housing also has to go under the knife 
Don't try this at home. This is a cool design out front here though. The tri LEDs, they're on a separate part that simply half turns on and off. You're only able to do so on this assembly with this taken out of the yellow body. Simple connector on the end and this would be a very easy replacement when needed. Shouldn't be surprised, Mac Tools, also Stanley Black & Decker, has had something similar on even an air tool for years. This is a cool design, less tools thrown away because of chewed up front covers and non-working LEDs. There's actually a lot of cool stuff on this tool. You get a full-size needle roller bearing out front. You don't see that on even half-inch impacts anymore. This is like half-inch, five-eighths thick. Probably afforded that space by the light assembly, but still, making some of its size make sense. In the planetary gears, there's three of them on this guy, which is somewhat traditional, but you see a lot of brands moving away from that, including M12 and M18 going to two gears, which we don't feel saves all that much and would probably go through less gear teeth when some parts are hardened too much, just saying. Anyways, suffice to say that we like this design overall, and its size is mainly for design benefits, not just the usual maximizing of hammer mass for cheap power reasons. Pretty happy with the surgery results here, all the edges deburred and smoothed over to not interfere with anything. This is a pretty sweet little unit now. Let's do some science. We're jumping right into it. This is forward driving. We're measuring 4,800 impacts per minute right here, and it's a thing of beauty. This is about one to two seconds in on a trigger pull. All the footage you're seeing here is well under one second worth of real time. And this is another shot taken maybe six to seven seconds into an impacting run. This is where things start to get wild. Are you seeing this? Every second hit or so it's bouncing and rebounding off the back of the gear assembly. This is not something we've ever seen before on any cordless tool. We initially thought the spring itself was running out of compression and binding up, but the intersection with all these centered metal parts, that's what's running out of travel. There's a helical twist in the center that rotates it back, and that's being pushed back with such speed and force that it's maxing out all of its travel and hitting back off. Now check out reverse. Same sort of behavior, that bouncing off and then back, but now it's more like a ballet. Somehow the coil spring turning the opposite way makes this impact assembly just sort of sing away nicely, bouncing more like a basketball now, one per hit. In forward, this was every second hit, sometimes every third, sometimes every fourth hammer hit it would do this rebounding. Here's a wider shot. We measured this at 4,200 IPM, sometimes up to 4,900. It wasn't very consistent. Here's the kicker though. For those brief rebounding hits, they're being accelerated at such a speed that it represents 6,900 IPM worth of that mechanism. Like if it were to do this every single hit the same way, it would be 6,900 IPM. Reverse doesn't see such inconsistent off and on performance. This is instead operating at 5,000 to 5,300 IPM here consistently. And this is with a regular five amp hour battery. Here's with a high performance six amp hour XR. Yeah, we weren't even in our final form there. This is sort of the barrier point from moving from smooth hitting to rebounding hits, which takes us from an early smooth 5100 IPM up to now 5700 to 5900 impacts per minute on a 4500 tool that's competing against 4000 to 4400 IPM impacts. That all looks like this in real time. This is mode one. And this is in high. They accidentally or purposefully, we're not sure, made an impacting beast with this thing. Even 4K shots here at 500 frames per second struggle to capture much of this action or 2K shots at 700 frames per second. What we do pick up on is a lot of back and forth jitter. Normally you get some from the hammer weight just moving back and forth, but as this tool transitions into its stutter step rebounding trick, that rebound and then slap forward does result in more back and forth hammering that one feels strange on your hand, mainly in forward, where the behavior is more random and pinball-like, and two, it's a strange phenomenon for the tool to feel as well. The tool's aluminum hammer housing isn't through hole screwed or pinned in place like some designs. It's simply clocked into position by the inner shape of the nylon body. You can see that cutaway sort of here. This results in a fair amount of whiplash between the body and the hammer case as a result. Not sure if this is dampening the vibration effect or making it worse to you holding the tool, but it seems worth pointing out very Hercules-like except caused by the unique impact hammer tennis match that's happening inside this case. I love this thing. On massive lags, maybe just use an impact wrench 
on smaller or normal stuff, this sort of hitting speed is just amazing. I'm a certified tool geek though, ringing out close to 6,000 IPM out of a tool like this is, well, it's the sort of thing we may not see for another 10 years from another tool, if fasteners can even take that, I don't know. This uncoordinated ballet inside, particularly in forward, does make for some punishing feeling tool at times. It can be more difficult to keep on the head of a fastener in our brief experience trying to use this around here this week. Maybe if they flip that spring around inside, it would make it more of a driver and a balanced feeling one when driving rather than in reverse, who knows? But we're fairly certain this small-ish hammer and high performance spring is resulting in the numbers this tool does make, just getting way more hits in during the same period of time compared to its competitors, which is one way to reach a higher resulting torque in the same amount of time. So in a way, it does do as promised, maybe accidentally, maybe by design, no doubt the folks at SBD know much more than we do and have more expensive high-speed cameras. I hope you enjoy coming along with us as we sometimes hack up tools to try and learn more about them. We do this sort of thing most Fridays. Click below to follow along and thanks for watching.